Okay, now I want to go back to my perspective view. So I'm going to hit 5 on the number keypad. And then I'll zoom out using the scroll wheel. And then I'm going to use the left mouse button. And I'm going to click on a point below this wine glass. And this adds a cursor that will be the center point of the next object that I add. So now I'm going to go up to the Add menu, select Mesh, and Plane. And this plane is going to be a surface which will be located below my wine glass. So now with it selected, I'm going to press the S key and then drag my mouse so that I can size this up. And I press the left mouse button to lock it in place. And I'll use the scroll wheel to zoom out some. And with this plane selected, I'll go over here, make sure I have material selected, and I'll click on New. And I want to use the surface of Diffuse. So that's already selected for me. And then I'm going to click on the color here and choose an orange color. And then I want to add another plane that I'm going to use as my light source. So right here is my camera. I'm going to left click behind my camera and I'm going to click Add Mesh Plane. And then I'll press R on the keyboard to rotate this plane. And then I'll press S to scale it. And then with the Materials button still selected, I'll press New. And for the surface, I'm going to select Emission. And this makes it emit light so I can use it as a light source. And you can adjust the amount of light or the strength with this right here. So I'm just going to left click it and then I'm going to enter 10. Now I'll go back to the plane that I have located below my wine glass and I'll right click on it to select it and I'll zoom in on this with my scroll wheel and then using this blue up arrow here which is the Z axis arrow I'm going to click on this with my left mouse button and while holding the left mouse button I can drag this up and I'm going to drag it until it just covers the bottom of my wine glass and then I'll pull it down so it's just below the bottom of my wine glass. When we render this picture, we will be rendering it as viewed from the camera. And if I press zero on the number pad, this will give me the view that the camera sees. And I can adjust my view from within camera view if I make a change to my properties. So if I go down to the view menu here and then select properties, this brings up some menu choices here and what I want to do is find the lock camera to view and click this checkbox. And now while I'm in this camera view I can use shift plus the middle mouse button to pan my view and I can also use the scroll wheel on my mouse to adjust the zoom. And at this point I've done a lot of work and so I want to save what I have so I can come up here to the file menu and select Save As and I can type in a title right here for my file. I'll call this Wine Glasses and then press the Save button here. Okay now I'm going to make a duplicate of this wine glass so I'll right click on the wine glass and press Shift D to duplicate and then when I move my mouse it will move the duplicate wine glass but I want to move it just on the x-axis so if I hit the X key now it will restrict my movement to the x-axis so I'm going to pull it to about right there and then click the left mouse button to put it in place then I'll use my mouse wheel to zoom this out then I'll use the shift button plus the middle mouse button to pan this and I'll just do this back and forth a couple of times until I get the view that I want and that looks good and I'm done with these property items here on the right so I can go back to the view menu and select properties and that will get rid of those menu items and then next I'll press on this little button that looks like a camera and that's the render button and without changing any options we'll just press on this image button here to take a quick look at what we have so far And this will look pretty grainy right now because we didn't render it with very many samples. But as you can see, we have our two wine glasses and we have our background. 
So now some of the options under render are the resolution, and this is the size of the image that we're going to produce. And it's currently set for 1920 by 1080, but it's also set for 50%, so we're only going to get half of that resolution. And if we scroll down here, you can click on Integrator here and open up these options. And this is where we select how many samples that we would like to do for the rendering. And the more samples that we have, the better the image will look, but the longer it will take to render the image. The image that we see right here was done with 10 samples. 100 samples will give you pretty good results, but 1,000 samples is what you can use if you want some real high quality. So I'm going to click this and set this for 1,000 and hit Enter. And now if I press the Image button, it'll start to render this image. And with each sample, the image will get a little bit better. And if you look right here, this tells the progress that I'm currently making. So this 1,000 is the goal that I'm trying to reach, 1,000 samples. And I'm currently on sample number 10. If you want to abort the rendering, you can press the Escape key and that will allow you to abort. And I can actually tell by this rendering so far that it's not quite as light as I would like it to be. So I'm going to lighten up the scene just a little bit. So I can press Escape again, and that will take me back to this view that I had. And I'm currently in camera view here, so I can press zero on the number pad, and this will toggle back to the other view. And this plane up here at the top right is what is emitting my light. So I'm going to right click on it, go back over here to the material button, and I'm going to increase the strength here from 10 to 20. And then I'll move the cursor back into this view section here, and then press the zero on the number pad to get me back into my camera view. And then I'll press the camera button again for render, and press the image button to start rendering. And now I can see that my scene is lighter and this is what I want. So as you can see by the samples here, it's going to take me quite a while to get up to a thousand samples. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I'll come back as soon as this is finished rendering. Okay, now I'm done rendering my image with a thousand samples. So the next thing that I will want to do is to save this image. And I can do that by making sure my cursor is over the image here, and I'll press the F3 key. And this brings up a window where I can select what type of file I would like. And I'm going to use the PNG, and I'm just going to call this Wine Glasses. and then I click on the Save button. And then I'm also going to go back over to the File menu and click on Save just to save my final project. So this is how to use Blender with the Cycles Render Engine to create wine glasses. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.